Good evening, everyone. This is uh, Chris Watson here at Music Eye, and uh, Kelsey Bovey is with us tonight. And uh, this is the Music Expo UK page, and she's just been playing there live since six o'clock. Uh, not, not till this time. She had a break, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> but here she is now, and uh, she had a great performance earlier, actually, super solo performance. A load of people were engaged, anyway, one way or another. So it worked well. It worked well. I don't think there are any transmission breaks either, from what I could see. It's completely smooth, as far as I could tell, which is good. Unlike Zoom, I've noticed even on the TV, Zoom tends to crack up occasionally. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with this because uh, Super Solo Performance. Uh, I've, already, I've already said to Kelsey, I've played one of her tracks on uh, Music Eye Radio on Froom FM back in February. Uh, I think she noticed. We'll see. <laughs> it was called Define Me. Was that, I'm not sure that's the first single. Was that the first single? Yeah, that was my debut single. Yeah. Was it? Excellent. Yeah. So it's been played already, so that's good. We'll have to play it again, won't we? Thank you. Okay. Well, what I'd like to say now is, is can you give us something about your background? Because um, where did you start on this journey? Well, it was. I started when I was eight years old, um, but I never actually started out writing my music or singing which is quite, not many people can quite picture. But um, I started learning the piano um, about the age of eight and someone came into our class one day. I was like, I've got, I've got a piano teacher. And I was like, that sounds cool. So I'll, I'll join along. And ever since then, I um, started singing just kind of on my own in my bedroom to like all like the 2000 songs that were kind of out at the time. <laughs> is it that um, bedroom? Is it that bedroom you were in? Yeah, no, I, um, <laughs> I moved to house, but... <laughs> Um, no, yeah. it's a studio, isn't it? I mean, this bedroom is quite a yeah, 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 quite yeah. an important part of this journey, I guess. So, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was just kind of singing along to things, and then I kind of pieced them together. And I was thinking, what if I was to put my piano skills and my vocal skills together? Um, and then I started writing when I was about twelve years old, um, just about twelve-year-old things, I guess. <laughs> Whatever mm. a twelve-year-old thinks about in these times, but. Um, yeah, um, so then I put those two together and then I started learning the guitar when I was about 14. Um, and then kind of using all those tools together, I started writing more music and developing my songwriting. And then um, I got, met the guys at Puzzle Maker Studios who um, I record my records with and they loved all my stuff, thank, thank goodness. <laughs> um, and yeah, we started doing some co-writing and I started releasing music and that's kind of how okay. it finally came about and all that kind of stuff. So. Right, so yeah, okay. so. Who called it country pop then? Was it you or somewhere else? Well, um, I was kind of interested in country growing up because my dad listened to it and like yeah. um, the Puzzle Maker guys are like a country specific kind of, that's kind of their main thing at Puzzle Maker. So, right. and I kind of liked going to country gigs as well. So all these kind of three things together kind of pieced mm -hmm. my sound together, I guess. And my songwriting yeah. was going that way anyway. So I think everything just kind of joined together nicely and that's kind of how it came about and that's kind of okay. what I went for. So does your songwriting skills then, was it, was it, is it a natural thing to you? Is it just flowed from you? Well, um, so when I wrote my first song that um, I released, um, the first song I ever wrote that I thought was good enough, let's say, that wasn't so immature for a 12-year-old, <laughs> yeah. um, was Lady in Red, which I released on my debut EP. Um, and that, I wrote that song two days after I broke up with my ex-boyfriend, so I was in a lot of distress. Um, and I just kind of let all the words kind of flow out of my mouth and like put it onto my notes right. and all that. Um, and then um, when I started playing those songs to um, Puzzle Maker, they were like, like, do you know you're doing these kind of techniques and all that stuff? And I was like, no, have you had any training? I was like, no. <laughs> but um, being with those guys has really helped me kind of progress my songwriting and kind of understand right. reasons behind why you do certain things in songwriting yeah. what kind of makes it commercial to an audience especially the country audiences that's what I'm trying to reach but um, okay. yeah. um there's a lot of things that I didn't realize I was doing and then now I kind of can put a name to what I'm doing it kind of makes a lot more sense and I can try yeah. and be like I could add that there I could add that there so, <laughs> I was yeah. going to ask you if you had any formal training actually but it sounds like you've had some help anyway so there's expertise coming in to something you've already got which is obviously mm -hmm. a good talent there brilliant thank you I, I think what beats me about country music, um, the thing is, it's, was it about three chords of misery, wasn't it, country music? I can't, I can't remember. It was <laughs> might be, yeah. Three chords of something, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a, um, obviously country music is very storytelling and very emotional. Yeah. And obviously me being an emotional person, I kind of gravitated to all that as well. Yeah, yeah. So I just kind of wanted to 
the, the main reason I wanted to release my debut EP was mainly because I've been through so much for such a young age, like being bullied in school. And I feel like that's really relevant to everyone. Um, that was kind of the same age that I was. So I wanted that EP to kind of represent that side of things. I kind of want to be a voice for people that are being bullied and just know that I've got through it. And now I'm releasing my own music of telling my own story. And I'm like, it's kind of like saying you can do anything you want to. Cause I, I never thought that I could release music. And obviously um, my latest single to number two in the iTunes charts. And like me thinking of that back when I was being bullied and everyone didn't like me. And then moving to that, it's like, wow I never thought I could do that and that's kind of what I want to send to people who are going through the similar things like you can do it just work hard and stay true to yourself that's yeah. kind of what I wanted to say oh that's great yeah that's great that actually we could do it uh, instead of country pop make it prog country I think that would bring some more in <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is progressive isn't it it is progressive mm. I mean you know it's some of the country songs of the past I mean lots of people know all the, all the obvious ones but there are many others out there you mm -hmm. can't remember all of them um do, do you find I mean, bouncy songs, really. It's not all about misery, is it? They're quite bouncy, aren't they? No, yeah. not at all. I mean, a lot of country songs and a lot of songs in general about love and, like, exciting moments in people's lives. So um, my new single, Magnetic, is just kind of that... Um, just an upbeat kind of song that you kind of want to let your hair down to and have a dance to, um, yeah. but have, like, that happy kind of thing behind it. But there is, like, a there is a little hint of uncertainty, so it was kind of like... I've been hurt so many times before. Are you going to do the same? I hope not. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to keep it still cheery. I didn't want to delve into that too much because I thought like that would just kind of kill the vibe of what I'm trying to do. Yeah, sure. You kind of got to be careful on these kind of things, I guess. But mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I've got a good background there to you. Fantastic. I hope people are going to take all that in. Should learn something from that. You mentioned Danny McMahon. Actually, is that a songwriting yeah. partnership? Yeah, so um, he works at Puzzle Maker Studio, so he also co-produces my records. But um, Define Me and Positivity, we wrote together, which was on my debut EP. So um, yeah, when we've been writing a lot ever since, um, my new EP that's coming out soon, he's co-wrote two tracks on there as well. Yeah. And kind of, we co-wrote one in lockdown as well, like over Skype. So it's kind of like lots of different things. We've co-wrote lots of songs together, but it's just kind of like picking the ones that we want to yeah. put yeah. forward, I guess. Okay, so I think it's larger then, isn't it? Okay, um, it's actually, it's it's a room for covers in any of your, do you rather sing all your own originals or it's a room for covers really? What do you think? It kind of depends what audience you're going to. Me personally, I like doing my original stuff just because I feel like yeah. it's a way of me telling my story to people. Um, it's a way of also just getting yourself out there for where I need to be in my career to kind of go, go where I've yeah. always dreamed of going, I guess. And what I do is basically based around releasing music. But I do love covers because it's a song that everyone can inclusively can join together. Because yeah, yeah. everyone knows like a, maybe one certain song that I do in the country scene um, that's quite popular. So it, it kind of depends because you kind of connect with people on, on your originals in a different way than you would with covers. But it's kind of picking yeah. which way you want um, to speak right. to you. So what we're saying is they've got a place. I mean, I, I prefer originals myself, but they've got a place, haven't they? Yeah, of that's course. Fair, yeah, that's yeah. fair enough, yeah. And you can express them in your own way anyway. So, 100, yeah. Oh, and original in a way, isn't it? Okay, did, you played solo tonight. Um, I know it's not easy without an audience, um, but, I mean, you just play because you love singing and doing yeah. your songs, really. Do you prefer playing with a band, though? Normally. Um, I haven't actually got a band yet. I'm, I am looking for oh, a I band. Had one. Right. I no, saw one on the video. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So I don't have a band at the moment. Um, okay. I'm kind of going solo at the moment. But we we have got people in, in line um, for when lockdown's released and everyone we can go and do shows. So look for that kind of stuff coming up. But um, as of yet, no. <laughs> but, okay. um, but I have played like a band before, like when I was kind of in college and like doing all yeah. that. I, I have done in bands before and it's really fun so I, I'm kind of excited for when yeah. everything comes together and I can finally do my own music together so yeah it's, it's just that I saw this video on YouTube and there were two people elsewhere and you were in your own place oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> a drummer and a guitar I think I don't know bass yeah. player I think yeah yeah, yeah. It, so yeah so um those guys are made puzzle maker so all that okay. kind of that bubble yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so a band could be coming up then that'd be good yeah um Actually, that brings us to what is coming up. <clears throat> you mentioned EPs already. I mean, I looked at your Facebook page. It's a very lively Facebook page. 
It's at Kelsey Bogey UK, by the way, everybody, because we have to have little bits on the end these days to delineate from everyone else, don't we? <laughs> well, no, I we... can't make any of the Kelsey Bogeys, can there? <laughs> is there any more? I bet there is in America somewhere, yeah? Sorry? <laughs> Kelsey Bovies, I bet there's some more Kelsey Bovies somewhere. Yeah? I tried searching on Facebook, but I can't, I can't find anything, but there might Brilliant. be somewhere. <laughs> Just you then? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay, but what is coming up? You know, you've got this EP coming out, surely, a second EP, isn't it? Yeah, so um, I'm releasing my next EP, Not Scared Anymore, which is a, t which is a title track EP. Um, so I've got a song called Not Scared Anymore on the EP. Um, and I wanted that EP to kind of represent how I've grown from my debut EP because, as I said before, that's really emotional and it's got all of my personal stories in it. But I kind of wanted to show the growth I've um, experienced and then put that into this one. So it's kind of a bit more, it's a bit more fun, it's a bit more lively, but I've still got that um, song, Not Scared Anymore. And that's about um, picking yourself up, um, dust yourself off, if anything um, is bothering you or if you're upset you're um, about like yourself you are good enough just all these kind of different things i kind of wanted to show to everyone yeah yeah uh, yeah i've been through something but that yeah. doesn't define who i am if you excuse the pun <laughs> but that's it what you just i mean you are good enough i heard that many times from many people you are good enough yeah it's true isn't it yeah. um, just one last question before we go though yeah how do you cope with your own promotion do you find it difficult to do that all on your own especially when you're trying to create new music as well yeah so um i do have a management team luckily you. fingers crossed with scarlet river management um so those guys do really really help me out over there right. um, they kind of help with me with my release plans and like kind of when to post certain things mm. um what kind of things will reach certain audiences just all those kind of clever things right. um i right. do have to like do some stuff myself so kind of researching into how i can i don't know expand my instagram following or how i can um gain more subscribers on YouTube. So I'm doing a new series on YouTube where I upload a, a video every Sunday at 10.30. I noticed. So I, do, yeah. um, <laughs> so I can do um, an original or a cover as so that will kind of bring people there for like the consistency because that's what kind of people like on YouTube. So yeah. it's just kind of like knowing what platforms are good for what different things. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why people want to look at stories. I mean, maybe, maybe that's just me, but it obviously works. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think it's just the, ma the main thing is it's at the top of everyone's Instagram. So you can just click on it and just mm. go through. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's quite popular. I guess I, I post on both. I post on my feed and I post on my stories. So um, I kind of want the information to stay on Instagram. But if people don't really know my music or don't look at my page very yeah. much, on my stories just kind of see what's going on, I guess. I mean, it's quite nice if somebody put me on their stories on Instagram. That was, that was nicer than that. What am I going to say on mine? I don't know. <laughs> funnily enough, funnily enough, I got uh, an Australian band I saw in, in Somerset, and they've gone back now, and they've had a terrible time there. Yeah. And um, I noticed them on Instagram, which is how powerful it is, and I, I, they've got some new tracks out. So I've actually asked for them via Instagram, and they're sending them hopefully soon. And yeah. that's, it, that's how it works. You get that connection wherever you are, don't you? And that's, yeah. that's really good. I know it's hard work. But. Yeah, it's so important to... Um, gain contacts and I feel like yeah. you just have to be a nice person I guess and you can <laughs> well, we are, the, hopefully. The thing, I think. Um, you just have to be nice to everyone because at the end of the day everyone's going to support you yeah, especially yeah, if you yeah. been. and there's an, I, I don't really see the point in bitterness and all that kind of stuff with it yeah. um, but if people want to support you you should accept it that's the way I see it so okay mm. have you been played on Bristol radio local radio or BBC yet Radio, yeah, I've been played on BBC Radio, yeah. Come in, yeah. introducing, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, they interviewed me on BBC Radio Bristol really? not long ago, yeah. Uh, yeah. They played my um new single, so okay. Well, oh, I've got you as well now, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think we'll call a halt now. It's uh, it's Sunday night, and it's actually it's the good. sun's coming out, which is good. It is a little bit, it's been yeah, but I'm still staying on the beach anyway. I'm staying on the beach, okay, Kelsey. Thanks very much for your time. It's